please. Like, I can't, I can't pray. Quiet! Bow before your God! Ijakumo, the born-again stripper, tells the story of Ashabi, the daughter of a very powerful spiritualist who is hell-bent on destroying the life of her ex-lover, a now-renowned Lagos big pastor, Jide, who cheated on her and left her alone to die. Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel, Movie Chat with Tiana. Please do well to like, subscribe and leave your comments in the comment box. Grab your popcorn as I comment to the story of this wonderful movie. Remember, this recap is not meant to replace the movie, either should it stop you from watching the full movie in its entirety. The movie opens with Ashabi in a visit to her late father's memorial service with some women in white singing for the occasion. Ashabi then walks to the rocky hills. Lost in deep thoughts, she envisioned her younger self on the floor with a pool of blood all over her body. Ashabi and her team goes through multiple pictures and videos of strippers. Then, she finally chooses a lady named Sharon from Uganda to carry out her assignment. We then see a congregation of worshippers in church singing and praising God with Pastor Olajide preaching for them to come sow their seeds, which most of the church members did. Sister Mary, the chief chorister, met Pastor Olajide in his office and asked him to borrow her some money for her sick sister. But the pastor asked her to read a portion of the Bible that says humans can't help or heal, that only God could. In disappointment, Sister Mary left. Pastor Jide is in the meeting with some men and a woman, their leader. They question him on why he is spending money lavishly. The woman reminded him of how the court made him the prominent and wealthy man of God he is today and also how they have the power to take everything that he has labored for and reduce him to abject poverty. Jide was to a stripper's club make some observations on the pole dancers, then selects one of the dancers, paid heavily for her to dance for him in private. She seduces him but refused to be touched by him. Jide removes her mask and his, then identified her to be his singer from the church, answering Sharon at the club as against the Mary she answers at church. When he got home, he slept with his wife. Pastor Lajide invites Sharon to his office and asks her to sleep with him, but she still refused, saying her body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Later, his wife Jumoke walks in and asks him to go on a lunch date with her. Ashabi pays Sharon well for the job she had done on Jide. On her way to her vehicle, she meets a lady and her little daughter, who asks her to give them some money to feed. She then gives them a little amount of money, and the lady's daughter began to drum in the process. She drummed so well and the drumming reminded her of her past life when she was living with her father in the village. One day, as she and her father were going home, they were stopped by some thugs who demanded money from the father. He refused and they broke a bottle in an attempt to hurt them. The man suddenly invoked his drum and gave it to the villagers, gave it to the towns and told them to drum and dance all the days of their life. As Shabi questioned the father, on why he gave them the drum. He said the drum will return back to him before he gets home. Her father then gave her a certain food to eat in order to protect her from such evil boys. Pastor Jide continued to visit Sharon the stripper and in church, when she sings, Jide could not concentrate well. All he could see is a naked stripper sleeping with him. Sharon gave Jide another lap dance, but she was stopped by the pastor who still insisted on sleeping with her, no matter the price. Back at Ashabi's house, Sharon hands her a flash drive she has stolen from Pastor Jide, but it wasn't the original one. She however tells her to go to his house and get the real flash drive. She calls Jide and informs him that she is wet and needs to sleep with him. In joy, he agreed. Sharon insisted they sleep together in his home, on his matrimonial bed. A sighted Jide called the wife and asked her to pack some few things and leave the house, as there would be a spiritual cleansing in the house. Sharon questions Pastor Jide on why he's living a double life of deceit and holiness, contradicting what he preaches in the church. Jide laughed and proceeded in telling her his life history. He flashed back to the time when he was serving God in all sincerity, but didn't get any attention from the public.
Ashabi, his girlfriend at the time, kept encouraging him not to give up on himself. One day, a man was traveling to the east but was attacked by some village touts. Jide and Ashabi came to his rescue. He asked them for what he could do to reward them for their kindness. Ashabi immediately tells the man that her boyfriend is in need of a job. The man tells them to come to Lagos where he can fix him a job. In Lagos, the man offered him a job of a human organ harvester, but Ashabi said he cannot do such a job. When they were about to leave, she remembers and tells the man that Jide is a very good preacher and can preach very well to the crowd. The man accepts him into his court. Ashabi takes Jide and his brother Wale to her father, a very powerful spiritualist who gave Jide a charm. Jide screamed as a result of the fire on the charm placed on his palm. He took the charm away from him, saying his type will abuse powers when given to him. Jide lives in anger, but Ashabi tells him to visit another spiritualist, Inileife, whom is he, her father's friend. She hears the drum of her father, warning her of her actions, but she ignores the new spiritualist gave him a charm and instructed him to bury the charm in his church. He groomed himself the more and became the most powerful and successful man of God around. One night, Ashabi told him that she is two weeks pregnant. He however broke the news of her father's death to her that night and she wept. Sharon puts some pills in a cup of water for him to drink, but Okor distracts him from drinking the water, but he tells her to wait for him while he quickly attends to some issues urgently. Sharon then raided the house with the help of Ashabi and her tech guru. She gained entrance into his inner office and stole the flash drive. In no time, the members of the Brotherhood began to record big loss in their endeavors with no trace to the person behind it. Ashabi used a flash drive to hack the account of the church and took billions of money to settle the victims of Jide's evil doings. Curious Sharon asks Ashabi to drop her revenge on Jide as she's already doing well for herself and have all the money she needs to cut up for herself. She then tells Sharon that she can't relent because Jide destroyed her womb and took a lot from her. She then recounted on the past where she went out with Jide to eat. He then puts a poison in her food. She was taken to the mountain top where she bled badly and Jide watched her suffer, leaving her there all by herself and ran back to Lagos. Ashabi told Sharon that she cried and called on her dead father to come to her rescue, which he did. But he told her that he is highly disappointed with her and would have cursed her if not for her late mother, Aduke. She begged for mercy and powers. Then the father told her that she had already acquired enough powers inside of her body and do not need any more powers. At the funeral of a member of the Brotherhood, Ashabi appeared to Jide and tells him that she knows his full story. She built him and equally has the power to destroy him. In shock, Jide thought it was all a joke, so he insulted her of being ugly and local. Ashabi disappeared. Sooner or later, Ashabi's threat to ruin Jide began. The chair lady and Jide, alongside some other members, were on the run for their lives as the police came after them. Jide ran through the back of his house and jumped on a boat. He kidnapped Sharon's twin sister, whom is sick, tortured her to telling him where the flash drive is, but she could not say anything. His brother Wale brings the other twin, Sharon, who is a stripper, and while she was in a boot, she texts Ashabi that she had been kidnapped. Ashabi quickly informs the police to visit the scene. Sharon tells Olajide that the driver is with Ashabi, who is on her way to Abiyokuta at the moment. Suddenly, the police invaded the entire environment to an open fire with Jide and his boys. They killed most of the policemen and Sharon reunited with her twin sister. Jide, trying to shoot them, was interrupted by Ashabi. He threw a bullet at her, but they could not penetrate into her body. She sends them back to him and the bullet shattered his legs, which later killed him. Wale, his brother, stopped Ashabi but did not succeed. She yelled at him for trying to challenge her supremacy, then used her powers to lift him up to the sky and squashed him dead on the floor. 
Shara lost her twin sister to the incident and wept badly. Finally, we'll see a happy and fulfilled Ashabi dressed in black staring to the well. This brings me to the end of yet another incredible movie recap. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Please do well to like, subscribe and leave your comments in the comment box. So like come your way next time. Please stay happy.